All right, I'm gonna have you start by introducing yourself and telling us what you do. Well, hi, um, my name is Yuta K. Best and I am a spiritual guide, card reader, um, and yoga and meditation instructor. So I think that pretty much encompasses it. Or I guess the things that I offer publicly. I also have like a radio show and I'm a part of the Satya Yoga Co-op. But as far as what I offer, it's the spiritual guidance, the card reading, and yoga slash meditation sessions. And you haven't always done that, right? Is this kind of new, new development? Yes, well, the card reading is really, well, I've been studying the cards for probably about 10 years, um, but I just, I've only been reading within the past year. I never really intended to read. Um, the yoga is a little over four years old since I've been teaching yoga uh, and meditation, I guess, goes along with that. I've actually had a very serious meditation practice probably since about 2009 but it's another thing that I never actually intended to teach is just something it is my part of my self care. Um, um, and before that, you know, I taught school for a while in, um, 2012, 13 and 14. I taught K through eight, um, math science. And in order to get the middle schoolers to do their math, I created um, a hip hop philosophy curriculum awesome. and they had to do their math in order to participate in the hip hop class. And then prior to that, like I started, I was pretty much trained from a little, little one to become an engineer. Like I'm from, or I'm not from, but I, I spent most of my youth in LA and you know, in the second grade you get the, everyone gets this aptitude test and because I was in the project, but I, you know, I was a little black girl with a very high aptitude for math and science. That was pretty much all I was ever taught. It was almost a given yeah. that I was going to become an engineer, which I did. And I was a successful engineer for successful with the quotes, um, <laughs> the air quotes. I was successful for um, almost 10 years doing that job. And I actually enjoy the work, but I just can't, I can't support the culprit structure. Um, there was a lot of reasons why I ended up leaving, but um, one of the straws that broke the camel back, the camel's back, is that I'm very idealistic, almost unrealistically idealistic. <laughs> um, and um, they laid off a lady who was, you know, approaching retirement. You know, so she's planning her retirement. Right. And then she finds out that, you know, they, I'm sure she got a severance, but whatever it was, it's not enough. She's instead of retiring, she's looking for work. Dang. And that just blew me away. And I just could not give my brain power to an institution like that. Um, I can totally so, understand that. Yep. So I left with like really no clue. <laughs> of what I was going to do, or I, I did have a clue. I thought that I was going to um, throw parties and I did actually throw parties for a while. Um, but I don't know how, I didn't know how to promote. So I just, you know, spent all of my money <laughs> on throwing parties without really making any money. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a very interesting path and I, I wouldn't change a thing about it. <laughs> How, how have things kind of shifted? Because you hear a lot of stories of people um, just like leaving the corporate world and like finding other, other work. Um, how, how, how does it feel now in comparison to how it felt then? Um, it feels good. It feels similar. Like, um, I guess to go ahead and bring the cards in, um, I'm the seven of spades and the seven of spades is the card of faith. Um, sevens are the first spiritual number. Like if anyone is into numerology, um, seven and nine are the two spiritual numbers. And seven is the first spiritual number. It's like really that first jump off into, um, into real spirituality. It's like the sevens kind of have one foot in the mundane world and one foot in the spiritual world. So I feel like that foot in the mundane world 
is like that math mind that I was ultimately just born with. You know, that's why I was able to really become successful in the engineering field. But, um, but in addition to the crazy things that my corporate folks did, I just, I wasn't really happy. Like I had the BMW, I had the big, beautiful apartment. We were traveling all the time. Like I pretty much had what I was told was going to make me happy, but I wasn't happy, you know, and I'm just the type of person that I, w I couldn't tell my son college job family and, and you'll be happy right. when that didn't work for me. And so I left and that, and it took me a while to realize it, but ultimately when you have those two feet and you start strong in the mundane world, the task is to shift into the spiritual world and find the same kind of success, but from or through your spirituality. And so I feel like after 12 years of like autodidactic study and just randomly going where I felt the universe was guiding me, I have finally come to a place where um, I'm actually starting to build a business and a practice. And I'm clear that, you know, I will be at least as successful in this arena as I was as an engineer. So it feels good. That's really exciting. And I know yeah. it's a really scary place to be too, because um, we've, we've done a reading, you've done a reading. Yeah. And I, I um, got a pretty clear mes message that's been reiterated about um, like the things I should be doing and um, kind of not settling in, into the kinds of work that I think are gonna keep me safe. Um, and that's a really scary place to be because I imagine you, you, you've been the breadwinner, right? And, oh yeah, it's, it's yeah. me and my son. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, um, to make that kind of decision, you're like, oh shit, like what, <laughs> what's going to support me? And then just, just having that trust. So I'm just wondering, like, um, like, were there any kind of, um, hints about like you're saying the universe drew you um all these different directions and i i totally believe in that stuff because i i see hits all the time but i'm just wondering like what were there any hints that of that support where where you didn't worry as much well yeah there was probably more than hints i think um i've always experienced an inordinate amount of synchronicity mm -hmm. And that, and that's really the, I mean, cause it really was jumping off of a cliff is what I did, <laughs> you know, and, and part of the reason why I'm an Aries. And so that's, you know, we're just courageous like that. And I fell, like I hit the bottom. I definitely have had some, some times when I was homeless, you know, I'm lucky that I have, my brother is like super, super support guy. Yeah. Um, so I've had support. I haven't been like homeless where we didn't have a place to stay homeless, but homeless when, you know, I didn't, we didn't have our own place. You know, me and my son are in the living room type of homeless. Yeah. So, um, but you know, the reason that I was able to do all of that is because there were always synchronicities letting me know and not that I was on the right path first, the synchronicities, but also because I began to be happy even while extremely broke i was much happier at times when i was broke than i was driving around in the bmw and you know traveling all over the place like in, in yeah. the last like five years or so of my corporate job um i was i was work from home i was completely work from home so we literally would i could get on a train anywhere that i had internet i could work so we were all over the place like i was traveling and having a good time but i just was not happy you know mm. and so yeah the, between the synchronicities and just the fact that even though i didn't have anything i felt better i felt you know more alive and like i was headed somewhere even though i didn't know where <laughs> yeah and that's that's a place to get like I think that that space of unknowing freaks people's shit like we think that like I, I've been there too for sure and sometimes still am it's just like I have no idea what's beyond that whatever that is and that's something that's like freaking me out right now like how do I get a hold on what what it looks like on the other side and that right. that answer isn't given to us like right um, 
as much as you plan like there are people who who like super plan their lives and uh it, i don't know maybe maybe it works that way for some people but... i don't think that it i don't yeah. think that anybody who has not relinquished control or surrendered to a higher power um they may be successful in mundane terms but i can't imagine that they're actually happy like i was successful in mundane terms but i was not happy but maybe you'll find someone i don't know that they're like they're like this is i decided this is what it was gonna be and i manhandle it into the structure that works right it it could happen (laughs) i don't know anybody but it could happen I'm always saying, I mean, my life has taught me flexibility or die. I, that's, I say that with a little irony, so like a little salt, um, because, um, <laughs> because um, I don't know, I've toned it down to like mostly like just like, okay, yeah, flexibility. But like for a long time, I was like, flexibility or die. <laughs> <laughs> I was mad because like nothing looked like the way I thought it was going to look, you know, right. like this, this part of my life, I thought it was totally going to be something totally different um yeah uh it's, it's but that's that fake it till you make it, fake it I mean, make it. and I don't really I'm not a fan of that phrase but ultimately I'm starting to understand it more because that's ultimately what it is like um I've lately become a huge fan of chanting affirmation and mantra mm-hmm. and um you know, I, I, I have the tendency to be, or not I, but my ego, I don't know, there's a part of me that has the tendency to be very judgmental. Um, but when I catch myself at it, you know, I'm, I release the need to judge. Instead, yeah. I choose love. I release the need to judge. Instead, I choose love. And some days I'm real mad yeah. while I'm saying it but I'm saying it anyway and it usually works it really it's it's shifting me in in ways that I can't even believe like I would not I didn't I didn't understand what people were saying when they talked about the power of affirmation and I know now (laughs) that it really is super potent medicine absolutely um I love mantra meditation I love affirmations um I um I, I just had like 15 thoughts, one of which was um, I'm on my second round of leading um, a group of folks through kind of a prosperity meditation um, through like, it's like the Deepak Chopra 21 day. Yes, month. yes. Uh, my <laughs> friend pulled me in again for my second time. Nice. nice. And it's, it's really fun, isn't it? Because you're like, oh yeah, prosperity. We always think money first. And then uh, it takes you through a lot of things that are really kind of hard and difficult. Like, um, you know, like, we're going to talk about your mom right now and like healing that connection and like, right. uh, we're going to talk about, um, you know, things you owe monetarily or energetically or whatever. And we're going right. to talk about um, just, you know, drawing the means and, and drawing it to you, like literally drawing it and like, um the means can look in in all different kinds of ways. And it's really cool to see everyone go through that process because it's like, oh, wait, we're not just talking about money here. Mm -hmm. Like we're talking about like those synchronicities that happen and we're talking about um, healing and we're talking about so many different things. Um, And it's really, really exciting because um, just, I don't know, it's just interesting seeing folks go through the shifts and then also being held accountable by leading their own groups and, right, um, right, <laughs> right, and it's, it feels really magical, like, there's a lot of really kind of coincidental things that happen for, I think, everyone in the group, I know yes. it's happened for me both times, so I'm just like, oh, I didn't expect that to happen, you know, right, so it's, yeah, but, it's really um, cool. Right. I, the, my first time of going through the 21 day abundance challenge or whatever it's called um, was right after I started reading cards. Wow. And so, yeah, and it was really, it was really potent for me. I was just running into random people. It was like I could be sitting at a restaurant and these ladies would come over and be like, oh, you look interesting, you know, what, what is that book <laughs> that you're looking at, you know, and I would just read people randomly at wherever I was at, and I yeah. didn't, 
I got I got a lot of money that I wasn't necessarily expecting. But even right. if people were not giving money, you know, people would buy my meal or give me drinks or yeah. I, I experienced a lot of unexpected, um, I guess, income, you mm -hmm. know, extra energy just generated sent in my direction during the challenge. I'm super excited about the second go round right now. You know, I kind of want to do it a third time, but I feel like I have to take it another, another step for another thing and let, let the folks who are doing it now do whatever they're going to do with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the big part of it is those mantras. Um, and I was just telling someone the other day, like, because I had received some feedback from someone. People like to make fun of Deepak Chopra, I think, because he's so big. And I, I get that, I guess. Um, I, I like Deepak Chopra. Um, and I've, I've also studied some, like, really deep meditation practices, too. And what I love about Deepak Chopra is he takes those really deep meditation practices and makes them duplicatable for everyone. So, like... Mm -hmm. Um, there are some really deep ideas that a lot of people aren't going to go and read the tomes or do 41, 128 days or whatever of like mantra grinding, right? right but they right. can, they can take a supercharged, you know, popular, um, powerful mantra and recite right. that for like 15 minutes. And there's still a lot of beauty and, and amazing miracles that can happen there. Right. Right. And actually I feel like after he's done talking, we're really only chatting for about five. Yeah, it's really you know? short. <laughs> yes, and it, but it's still, like you said, extremely potent. And this time, though, I feel like it's super potent for me because I'm only on day one. Mm -hmm. They had a day zero this time, which I'm not sure we had a day zero in my first go round. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but um, so there was a little bit there in day zero. But today was the first day where we actually had his meditation. And so I added the, I'm chanting mantra, you know, while I'm listening to him. Same, yeah. And, and I feel like this, like you said, this, this additional tool or whatever that we have to, on top of what he's giving us. I, I, in short, I expect exponential growth from every yeah. time that I do something like this, for sure. Well, I mean, anytime you say something like aham brahmasmi, which is like, I am Brahma, you're, you're pretty much saying, I am all possibility. That's yeah. pretty much what you're saying. You're saying, I can do anything, like Brahma. It's pretty right. much what you're saying. <laughs> so, yeah. like, that is, that's really powerful stuff, you know. For sure, for sure. Um, and it's interesting you should bring it up, because when I first got into my meditation practice, I had some experience with, like, some African-based systems around chanting and I would feel the immediate energy shift from the from the mantra without really knowing what it was and I was concerned that it was not my energy and so I didn't want that like okay. my meditation practice like an hour meditation you know I feel builds my energy the same way like 10 minutes of chanting does Mm -hmm. But I just didn't, I wasn't, I didn't know what that energy was that was coming on to me so fast. And so I didn't want it. And so I would always, I would prefer an hour of meditation to 10 minutes of chanting. Ooh. But now that I know that there is definitely a time and place to yeah. go ahead and accept and use that energy in your favor, you know? Yeah. I'll tell you a story. Um, there was a time where I decided I wanted to do all the mantras. So I was like, I was intending on mantra grinding myself off the plant planet. Like I just, I didn't want to be here anymore. And I was like, oh, these mantras can like do all this stuff. I'm going to do them all. And so I, there was this one time I was like doing nine at, at the same time. And they're like, you have to do them for like 41 days, 128 days and stuff. Really super powerful practices. And then you also have, um, accompanying practices like um you know not eating meat and like practicing certain things um and some you can't let people see you when you're saying them for the first 41 days or whatever um and um what happened was um my life got really crazy um because something they don't tell you about meditation sometimes it's, it's like that drilling down and it like <clears throat> makes all the stuff come up that you have to clear and you have to like look at it like I had a teacher tell me it's like someone grabbing you by the feet and hanging you upside down and it's all gushing out and you have to look at it and they're shaking yeah. you. They're like shaking it out. <laughs> and so I was doing nine of those and um, <laughs> I, I thought I, I, 
I was hearing weird stuff and like I was pretty sure stuff was moving in my apartment and like I remember my teacher came and um someone else and I told told her this and she's just kind of laughing you know and she's like maybe you should just do one (laughs) (laughs) and and actually before last night I would not have really understood what you're saying but um last night I did like my third Akashic Records um, uh-huh. meditation and when I came out of there I was pissed the fuck off <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if I'm supposed to cuss you I think t- I'm okay <laughs> yeah don't worry I put not meant for kids on YouTube so okay um, yeah there's there's one video with a, a penis monster in it so okay um, no we're worries good. We're good. <laughs> But yeah, I was heated. I was so heated. And it it felt so good while I was in it. But as soon as something set me off, it set me all the way off. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. I need to go back to my room. (laughs) I need to process this. This meditation is not done just because we stopped. (laughs) Right. You know? Yeah, because it will. It will bring your stuff to the surface. You don't, it doesn't disappear. It it comes up to be handled. You can't really go back. Yeah. Um, I remember I spent about two years pounding my pillow and screaming and calling the universe or God or whatever you want to call it. Like, you motherfucker. Like, this is bullshit. Because, <laughs> like, all of a sudden you have this new understanding, but you still have, like, you know, like the physical parts to figure out and, like, just all the different things, like your kind of physiological patterns, you know? Yeah. Uh, those things don't just it's not like a switch. It's like, okay, now you understand. Now you get to do the work. I thought that was the biggest load. (laughs) I thought that was crap. Um, Yeah. Yeah. No, we got to deal with it. It is hard. I don't know. I don't know any spiritualists um, who don't cuss at the creator (laughs) on the regular. Thank you for that. (laughs) Oh, you're welcome. (laughs) When I was a kid, my, my dad started going to church and it was the kind of, it was like a, I don't know if it was Baptist or Pentecostal, but they were they were wild in there, and that was interesting to see for the first time when I was like ten years old. And I remember one of the pastors was just like, "You're gonna burn in hell," and I'm like ten years old. I'm like, "Oh, I'm a sinner!" And so I thought God was gonna strike me down by lightning because oh, no. of my thoughts. And so oh, I never gosh. wanted anyone to look in my eyes, and I, I I was always monitoring my own thoughts because I thought, "Oh, I'm gonna get struck down by lightning" because I heard that somewhere. And then I don't know, about twelve years old or something, I think I finally like. I don't know. I don't know if I said something out loud or something. And then I waited. <laughs> like, maybe. <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> and then I was like, huh, that's interesting. But I actually didn't start cussing until, like, I don't know, my 20s, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I'm sure that I did it off and on. But honestly, because I definitely had a lot of um, internalized religion. <laughs> Yeah, I I definitely um, probably only within the last few years, I'm 46, you know, and it's only been within the last few years that I really just stopped, you know, monitoring myself and just let myself be like, you know, we got to find that authenticity, that comfortability with where we are. No, you never stop striving to be better. Right. But you're never going to actualize if you don't just accept who you are right now and figure out how to love it, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I think I had a reading with uh, Santero a little while ago, and um, and I, I, I think I probably mostly play it safe. He called me on it. He was like, you're not, you're not being in your nature, and you need to stop all of that. He's like, this, there's so much more here. Like, uh, and I was like, "What are you talking about?" Because he was talking about kind of like more, kind of like the more intense parts of myself that I've kind of bottled up because I have, um, I have let myself be sold a story that like there are certain things about me that are too much, right? That are too intense mm. or too much, or like you need to let it out in little sparks, or you know all these other things. And um, well, cognitively, I know that's a bunch of crap yeah Um, it's really hard to like you know change that it's like uh like my chinese zodiac is fire dragon and so like in my head i'm like fire dragon 
but in real life, I'm Tamika. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here, just don't push me too far, and then you will get Fire Dragon. But um, right, probably more than Fire Fire Dragon squared. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> I, I try not to go there. It takes a lot. It takes a lot now to get to that point. Um, but anyway, I don't want to talk to. I don't know. I don't know what I want to talk about. I don't know. Right. I'm. I'm getting in the habit of um, not saying what I don't want and saying what I right. want instead. Being in the affirmative. Mm -hmm. Staying in the affirmative. Awesome. Let me see. How was work today? Oh, you want to what talk is it about like to, Yeah, what is it like to be back in like the public? But so are first of all, That's are we question. allowed are they allowed to sit or is it still just to go? No, nope, it's only to go um and uh drive through mostly. Um folks who do mobile orders, folks who come up to the walk up, they have to do a mobile order and okay. then they have to call us when they're there to let us know and then we put it on the um on deck and close the window and they pick it up um so it's not as friendly well it, it, we're still trying to keep it as friendly because it's starbucks we have the starbucks experience you know right um but it's you know a different game and none of us are used to it on either side of the window right um and then i'm a busser too i thought about riding the bike because i do have a lot of anxiety about riding the bus okay um, and so RTD has um, half the bus blocked off to protect the driver. Um, wow. And the, only, the only folks that can get on in the front of the bus are um, folks with disabilities, so they, they can have accessibility. Right. Um, and there's a lot of rules, you know, please wear a mask. Um, and if, if you can't sit six feet or, yeah, six feet apart, don't, you know, wait for the next bus. And they also, while the buses wow. are free, um they they don't come as often now and also like you know i was going to work to be there at 6 a.m and so it's all it's all of us essential workers it's um construction workers and people in you know those kinds of jobs um and uh they're they're not going to wait for the next bus yeah um, no so all pretty expendable you know as essential workers and um we're, so we're all squished kind of in the back and um it's it's a little it's a little it feels scary it feel, and i'm just trying to like you know breathe the whole time and like everyone's doing their best like you know telling myself those things i'm like you could have ridden your bike and like, <laughs> yeah yeah um, and uh it's just like that's the reality that no one's talking about like i see a lot in my facebook feeds like oh you're a bad person in so many words for having to go to work and I'm like here's the thing like people I I've, I've heard it so many times like people if they they know if they don't work they won't eat right you know and that that's a reality for a whole lot of folks um and so like even like you know like the strikes that were going on um I've heard a couple of people be like why would they do that? Why would Walmart go on a strike? Like that, that job is keeping my house afloat right now. And like, if they go on strike, like I'm that far from losing my home, um, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like, it's just interesting to see like the different degrees of um, privilege, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm real lucky in a lot of ways. Um, you know, um, like I don't, I don't, I'm really lucky in a lot of ways and I do have to work at Starbucks right now. And yeah. I am really thankful for that job as well. I mean, right. doing the best that they can to, you know, keep us all safe. Um, you know, we're wearing masks, we're wearing gloves at the drive through window. Um, we get our temperature taken um, when we come in. Yeah, so there there are a lot of precautions put in place, but um you know, th this is something we don't we don't know what the full effects are going to be and then of course we have other other issues with folks who are deciding for us what, you know, um how the economy needs to run and whatnot. 
Um, so wow, interesting, interesting, interesting time. Yes, yes, yes. I, I'm, and I'm very interested to see how we recover from it. I remember the first time that I went to the store with a mask. Mm. It just, you know, and and we're not. There's plenty of room. We're not on top of each other. Right. But it's still, to me, I felt like I was in like some sort of a war video game almost, you know, with the masks <laughs> on and, and people are afraid to look at each other almost, you know, and definitely, you know, don't sneeze or cough or anything, you know, it's just, right. it's strange. It's very strange. Have you, I have to ask this because I felt a little bit of, of it in my neck of the woods, but have you felt like any, um, like by being um, a, a, a black person, by being black, like wearing a mask, has that like caused any issues or anything? Um, it's, it's possible. I'm super like, you know, the self-esteem prophecy talks about the different defense mechanisms we have and mine is aloof. Mm -hmm. So I'm not looking around anyway. So I don't know <laughs> how people are responding to me. I'm like, definitely unbothered by that piece nice you can feel some kind of way if you want to but you're ultimately just injuring yourself because I didn't even notice <laughs> I, I feel like I used to be like that and then I started writing a lot about like I um I started exploring more identity politics um not like it, it, it's it's from a place of being in between things so I'm a mixed race person um my dad's black my mom's white and like we have some native ancestry in there too. And like, I've always felt like there are a lot of things that are really difficult for me to claim. Um, and so like, I'm constantly trying to find the words to explain that experience. Um, but coming from a place where um, there were lots of things I didn't know. I grew mm -hmm. up in Boise, Idaho. Okay. Uh, most, most of my friends were w white Mormon kids, you know, growing up. Um, and so like there were just things I didn't know or didn't understand when they were happening, that they were racism or um, things like that. I don't want to talk about that too much, but I'm just trying to explain where I'm coming from, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then there were things that when I started to know what they, they were, were really confusing for me and still are really confusing because I think my mom also tried to bring us up in a way that um, she would say colorblind. And then of course we all know colorblindness is tricky um, mm -hmm. and um, we're starting to have you know more truthful language around what what that is um, and, yeah. and people are slowly learning um, and so it's just it's just been a really interesting ride and then it has also made me in certain respects a little too hyper aware sometimes um, mm. of like how I'm being perceived um, in certain you know areas of town yeah. Um, and so I know when I put on my mask and started walking around Sloan's one day and went to the store, there weren't a lot of people wearing masks and um, there aren't a lot of POC folks in this neighborhood anymore. And um, it was just, it was weird. It, it just felt really uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it was uncomfortable that first time when I went to the store. Um, but it was natural grocers and so most yeah. of those people were wearing masks but you know it was weird i guess i have had some folks like i i live by the safeway off of 20th and clarkson mm -hmm. and there there's not a lot of people in there wearing masks mm -hmm. and so i guess i probably do get a few little looks but i definitely like i'm just at a place where I'm just becoming really comfortable with myself and and am able to not take too many things personal. I, I'm That's it's all. not just it's just not it's not just intellectual knowledge that that issue is theirs. It's right. actually starting it really to be is. a part of my being, you know, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I wish you didn't feel that way, but I'm certainly not gonna own it or, you know let myself get too bent out of shape because you're been out of shape, you know? Right. Yeah. Like, Oh, you're dealing with that. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just trying to, you know, I just want to get some kombucha or. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and it's so funny. I mean, I guess it's just a lack of education. 
Right. Because I on, I only started wearing the mask because I heard that you wear the mask to protect others from you, not right. to protect yourself from the virus. And then you it's know? really it's really difficult not to think that there are just a lot of folks who don't really care. Like folks who yeah. aren't cognizant or don't really care. Um and um that that feels uncomfortable too. It's like, oh yeah. well I'm not sick, so I'm not worried about it. Um, and there are a lot of other things to consider. I don't know, just cool, yeah, you do you, I guess. And I will right. um wipe off all of my my boxes of stuff from Instacart when they get here. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's the hard thing for me is like trying not to become an absolute recluse because um I've 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 been experiencing some anxiety around that. Mm. Um just around people not really I don't know. I don't I don't know. I think there are a lot of things that can happen. Like a friend of mine said, maybe it's that people are so freaked out and they don't know what to do. So it's kind of like if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. If they don't think about it, it won't happen kind of thing. Um and it's really difficult to like begrudge people that um because I get it. It's a trauma re response. You know, right, it's like, right. Um, it's like, what do I do with this information? Ugh, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I'm trying to be compassionate that way. Um, and I do feel like there are some people who don't don't care, and that's real scary. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know. I guess partially again because of the Aries energy like fear is just not I definitely have some fears but they're few and far between like it's yeah. it's not my normal response to anything that's uncomfortable is like a quick flash of anger mm -hmm. if that you know mm -hmm. um but yeah yeah I don't know I'm not yeah I'm not I'm not scared um I don't know, and I guess partially the other thing that we hadn't, that I didn't really mention is that part of the reason or another reason that I was comfortable leaving corporate is because I got the download that, you know, even, you know, $150,000 a year right. is not going to afford me much. Like, we need our community way more than we need some, a bank account, you know? And I, I got a download like back in 2008 that, you know, you got to do whatever you got to do to find your tribe. Like at some point the shit is going to hit the fan. So I guess what I'm saying is that I've almost been preparing for some sort of a confrontation, you know, mm -hmm. for like 12 years. And so I just, you know, I, when I first in 2008, I was way more concerned with what was going to happen to the planet than I was concerned about running out of money. Mm -hmm. But, you know, those things certain, they shifted places like, and within maybe a year, maybe even less after studying some spiritual texts and things, I just got really, um, I started to become excited. Like, yes, the shit is probably going to hit the fan, but for the people who survive, we are going to evolve and be, this amazing these amazing beings you know and so yeah i kind of released the fear of what was coming a long time ago and i'm really just excited and curious to see how great the survivors are ultimately like yeah. I, I know that sounds crass but i don't know i mean it's i think it's realistic because that's the game that a lot of folks are playing they're like oh uh you know like if we preserve ourselves then we'll survive and we'll be on top kind of thing and this is i mean obviously this is a little different right we're actually talking about consciousness um and um you know the the uh the consciousness of humankind um and i i think i agree with that because like you know i've you know i had like a month at home before i had to go back to work and um pre-COVID um, lockdown, I know it's not a lockdown, but it's easy to call it that. But yeah. pre that time, uh, I was working five jobs, seven days a week. Um, and I really wasn't 
I was, I feel like I was just starting to get to a place where I could start moving into what I call the green, um, where I can like, you know, pay off the extra bills and like, um, extra bills being, uh, so I talked with a financial planner once and they said, the first thing you worry about is food and shelter. And when you have more than food and shelter, then you can think about some of those other things that, you know, cause they're already, they're already on your record. Like you can't really do anything about it. So you, you eat first and you make sure you have a place to sleep. Um, and so that's been kind of my philosophy since then. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I thought, you know what, I'm ready. I'm ready to do better. So I've been working in like five jobs and like three different careers. Then COVID hit. Can't be a massage therapist right now. Uh, right, right. cause I don't work in a medical facility. Um, and can't teach in a classroom right now. Um, and you know, I have the rest of the semester online, but, um, it's maybe up in the air, depending on what enrollment is from semester right. to semester. Um, and I have Starbucks. So, and Starbucks, uh, I, it's a huge blessing. Um, I never thought I would necessarily exactly. say that. Um, <laughs> before I was like, this is a means to an end. And I'm like, holy shit, this is like saving my ass right now. Right, right. Um, I'm trying to remember what I was trying to get back to. Um, consciousness. Yeah. Um, it reminded me of one time, one of those times I went to bed angry, punching my pillows, telling God he's an asshole. Um, that uh, <laughs> telling God is that she's an asshole. Um, it was just like I fell asleep, and I'm like, I think I was feeling real morose, and I was thinking about like just like seeing all the things that are happening um, with drilling and pollution, and people just not cognizant of their triggers and um, things they've been trained to do and sold to do, um, pretty much eating up the whole world. Um, and so it was so weird because I saw like every building uh, in the city that was a restaurant or a gas station or whatever, it just was sucking from the earth. It was just eating it up and people are downtown or whatever and they're just eating it up and like then, and creating a lot of detritus, right? And that's what they were yeah. doing. And I was feeling really depressed about that. And I was feeling depressed about global warming and all this other stuff. And um, I woke up and kind of heard a, a, a voice. Um, and it, it said, like, well, if the world was coming to an end, wouldn't you want to help raise consciousness? Mm. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> that's true that's right and that's real deep <laughs> yeah and like so what what are you saying here like <laughs> is this the way or <laughs> yeah like what is how oh shit uh what is and that was a long while ago um but I remember that moment and I was just like okay so it was like it helped me to accept things it helped me to feel like maybe um you know it's not hopeless um it's only hopeless if you're attached to a certain way of being right of course and of course you know all of us are to a certain extent um but raising consciousness we don't i mean we don't know what it looks like on the other side until we get there um and we have yeah. to do the work but i don't know i was just like oh okay thanks for that message don't know what to do with it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an awesome message, though. I mean, because it speaks, it's a very clear message that you have the power to be one of, to be a conduit for that raising of consciousness, you know? That's, and it really, that's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, true. But I think that's probably, so I remember hearing a story about Ram Dass and how a student went up to him and asked him about spirituality or something. He's like, run. <laughs> 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 like, you know, that's my advice, run. Right. And, and it's the truth. Like people think I, there's, um, you know, something I call mantra grinding. And then there's also something I call, um, you know, lotus eating. And we, we all think that, um, not all of us, but I think especially beginning, um, we think that we're going into uh, meditative practices or magic or whatever to like find bliss. 
I think a lot of it and bliss is really beautiful and it's awesome but and it can also be like a drug like you're always searching for that bliss and it gets harder and harder to get to and and really that's not necessarily the aim um and um I remember hearing so many stories like um one person I worked with for a while and stopped working with told me a story about how his teacher got really mad because they found that bliss and it was so incredible and they kept trying to get there and couldn't get back to it and so they just kind of turned into a totally different kind of person because they were so angry that they kind of let it eat them up because they wanted to get to the bliss so like um that that's really sad and I hope I hope they like heal that <laughs> yeah because um, it does it sucks it's like oh wow there's all this amazing bliss ah, and then you have to come back to world the world and there's this huge depression they never tell you about that happens you know it's like oh and then maybe a lot of times the bliss isn't enlightenment we think that the enlightenment is is bliss and i think bliss is a really good and important thing um yeah, I think I think I think enlightenment is service. Yeah, you know, and that's, that's the message there's I got. not very many people who really want to do that. <laughs> that was I had a teacher say something like that too. Had me um, look around the room. What do you see? I'm like we're all getting older. <laughs> that's what I see. Like supposedly we're learning these amazing practices practices to like help humanity what the fuck are we doing sitting here you know like it's just yeah. we're just we're just sitting here and and doing these beautiful mantras and they feel really nice and you know it's good to be in community but why are we afraid to practice the things that we're learning and i i walked away from that group shortly after that because i was just like this is we don't have that kind of time we don't have that kind of, kind of time to, for it to come to us if we've learned the work and need to go out and do it. Yeah. Yeah, time is definitely of the essence. And yeah, we definitely have to turn whatever it is, whatever gifts we have into um, some kind of service, you know? I, and I wish there were more things and and maybe it's not just maybe it's service and surrender but whatever it is it's not you get to you don't get to decide you no. know it, it definitely is that you can't control it you know like but but it yeah. is it is it is beautiful when you get there when you can be of service and do things that you don't like to do like i've never or I was not really a very good housekeeper, mm -hmm. you know, probably until the last couple of years or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so I went from just living with my brother and my son to now I live with a bunch of people and I've been determined to, you know, to keep up with a certain amount of housework and it has been yeah. really hard. And there are times when it really pisses me off but I really think that it's this determination to do that kind of service work that is somehow, I'm not quite sure how, but it's solidifying my self-esteem. Right. Like I, you know, it's just, I don't know. But all, all that to say that it's not fun. It bliss is definitely, it might be some sort of a side effect, but it definitely is not the goal. Um, the work is the goal and the work can be tedious and hard and trying, mm -hmm. but, you know, I can guarantee you that, you know, whatever is out there can help to make it rewarding. You know, you just feel better when you figure out how to do it. I think that's a really good place to end. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. Um, Welcome. yeah, I don't, I don't talk about this stuff a whole lot. Cause some people are like, Oh, you're getting into that woo woo shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the woo woo is going to save the world. Right. We woo wooers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to spell it. Don't ask me how to spell it. I, don't know. I know. I was like, I was just thinking about that. Like, what would that look like on the page? I'm woo -woo -woo -woo. <laughs> I do want to put on a t-shirt. I don't know. Maybe it's like three words I don't know anyway <laughs>
There's um, a symbol. I don't, I unfortunately didn't write down the resource, but in my early 20s, I would go to the library and look for like sacred symbols and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's a really cool um, Chinese glyph um, and it's Wu, W-U. Um, and it's like a feminine character in the middle and her hand is reaching down to two, um, two like maybe children. Um, and oh, it's wow. like, it's really spare. It's almost, you know, it's a little pictogram. Right, um, and I wish I I had written down that source so I could find it again, so I could find more information about it. But just about that feminine energy and that healing energy, um, and like obviously it's really important um, for like. Yeah, it sounds like the it sounds like it's gonna be our symbol for um, the decade of 2020 like I don't I I have zero ideas what you're talking about but just while you were talking about it I was able to get an impression mm -hmm. of the character and how you know the energy that it's presenting and I mean it'll come back yeah definitely don't worry about it like now that it's it's out there like you'll happen upon it it'll probably Facebook will show it to you now <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> It's kind of like I was having a conversation with someone earlier, um, trying to tell them um, some certain things about like, you know, letting go in relationships and stuff. And then there was um, a really apropos video from Muji in the corner of my screen when I was uploading another wow. video. I'm like, of course. They be listening, they be listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, wow. Well, tell folks how they can support you and where to find you. Um, so yeah, I'm doing, um, like readings now I do like a full year long reading, or I can do a little four card reading and relationship readings. Those are like my three reading offerings, um, yoga meditation sessions by the group or private. Um, and yeah, I have a link tree. It's just link tree slash Judah K best. That's E U D is in David A K. B is in boy, E S T, U to K best. Um, and folks can hit me up at U to K best at gmail.com as well. Um, yeah, definitely reach out, U to K best on Instagram. Yeah. And I can attest these, these readings are real powerful. Um, and uh, uh, definitely, definitely worth, worth doing. So um, you'll learn a lot about yourself. Um, and a lot about the forces that are kind of um, in your favor and some of your habits that maybe you don't want to look at. Uh, right, that right. might be good to uh, remedy and, um, you know, put, put baby steps in, in place to remedy them um, yeah. a lot more. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. I can't wait to see it. Awesome. Okay.